Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our Kosciuszko Chair Lecture Series. Uh, today, we will be talking about the Warsaw Uprising and in the social media sphere in Poland. Our speaker today is Mr. Paweł Rybicki, who was born in Wrocław, Poland. He's a very popular political blogger, excuse me, and he has been writing about politics since 2006, publishing in the oldest Polish political blog site, Salon 24PL, as well as various Polish magazines and newspapers. For example, the Polish Gazette or Gazeta Polska, and websites Niezależna.pl. He also worked as a journalist and an editor of a few websites, including the biggest Polish web portal, Virtualna Polska. His career initially started at Pardon.pl, which at the time was the biggest political website in Poland. Paweł Rybicki is also well known for his activities in the public sphere. He organized quite a few campaigns and protests, including anti-Putin demonstrations in 2009. In 2012, he participated in a campaign against reforms of the Polish educational system, attempting to do away with particular forms of the national history curriculum. His main interests revolve around Central and Eastern Europe. In 2006, Mr. Rybicki was involved in Belarusian opposition initiatives and organized pro-democratic demonstrations in Poland and Lithuania. In 2004, he was one of the observers of the elections in Ukraine. In March of 2014, he went to Kyiv to observe and report on the Euromaidan. Since January 2015, he has worked on the campaign staff of Poland's new president-elect, Andrzej Duda, as a social media specialist. As a highly experienced Twitter user, at Rybicki, he was responsible for his candidate's official Twitter account, at Andrzej Duda 2015, and the campaign staff's other online activities. Now, since we'll be discussing the Warsaw Uprising today, um, I'd like to take the liberty of giving you a very short background, a historical background, which basically boils down to, first of all, the partition of Poland with the event of Molotov Pact of August 23, 1939, when the Germans and the Soviets agreed to split up Poland and the Soviets, well, and also the Baltic states and parts of Romania. And a week later, this decision, uh, by which Stalin gave Hitler a green light, basically sparked World War II. So it wasn't just Hitler who was responsible for World War II. Stalin was, you could say, just as responsible as Hitler was. And they... Uh, Stalin took the eastern part of the country, Hitler took the western and the central parts. Um, Hitler invaded on September 1st, 1939. Stalin played a waiting game to see what was going to happen, whether the French or the British would act or not, since he saw that they would not. He basically stabbed Poland in the back, breaking a non-aggression pact between Poland and the Soviet Union from 1932. And Basically, uh, that was on September 17th, and he basically seized um, and incorporated Poland's eastern borderlands into the Soviet Union. And of course, he purged and ethnically cleansed them. Um, many of the Polish uh, POWs that the Soviets took um, prisoner, especially the officers, were later shot and mass executed at places like Katyn, which in the spring of 1940. But you have to remember that Katyn was actually the continuation of something that is very, that is not very well known, especially in the West, but even in Poland. And that was the Polish operation of the NKVD, from, which took place from 1937 to 1938. And basically, um, the Soviet NKVD, NKVD on Stalin's orders, uh, murdered up to 250,000 ethnic Poles living in the Soviet Union. So, what the Soviets did and Katyn in the eastern borderlands, all of those things were a continuation of the anti Polish operation of the NKVD in many ways. Uh, the Germans and the Soviets, when it came to their occupation policies, were very, very similar. Um, 
they said the, they, they, were, they were, in a way, learning from each other. Uh, there were mass executions. Um, one of the key similarities was the attempt to exterminate the country's elites. And by elites, we don't mean you know, just a few rich guys on top. We mean basically la all landowners, whether they have large estates or, or tiny estates, um, political activists, lawyers, businessmen, even police officers. Why? Because these, these leadership strata were considered the most dangerous because not only did they keep the memory of the Polish nation alive, but being, being in general entrepreneurial people, people who took initiative, they were considered the most dangerous and both the Soviets and the Germans feared that if there was a Polish uprising, which looking at Polish history was not at all unlikely, then it would be those strata that would probably re lead it. So being totalitarians, they just decided to decapitate the Polish nation uh, altogether. Like Stalin said, no man, no problem. When you get rid of the man or a whole, or masses of people, millions of people, you don't have to, you don't have that problem to deal with anymore. So. And Hitler believed, basically would have probably agreed, well, not probably, Hitler did agree with him. Um, and, of course, the Nazis, the Germans, later attacked their erstwhile allies, the Soviets, on June 22, 1941. So the eastern borderlands were also uh, taken over by the Germans, who held it for more or less three years until the Red Army returned in 1944 and began to push in. Um, and during the Second World War, the statistics, um, uh, Poland, statistics show that Poland was a giant cemetery, you could say that, because up to three million Christian Poles were killed uh, by the Germans and the Soviets. And on top of that, you had up to or perhaps even more than three million Polish Jews murdered not only in Auschwitz, which Auschwitz concentration camp was initially set up first to house Christian Poles. It wasn't initially established as an extermination camp. Um, but Jews were often just murdered you know, in forests, shot in mass, and, and buried in mass graves. and so. Especially, especially in the eastern borderlands and in the lands that the Germans took over from the Soviets in 1941. So there are many, many different uh, ways of mass murder, mass killing, and and exterminating uh, both the Poles and the Jews. Uh, now, getting back to the situation in mid 1944. The Red Army, which had, which had benefited from American and British help, you have to remember that the Soviets received everything from food to trucks, even to Sherman tanks. Um, they received a lot of hardware and food and everything to keep, the, uh, to keep them from succumbing to the Germans in late 1941 and early 1942. So that boost allowed them to eventually recover and start pushing the Germans back. So one occupier, one occupying totalitarian regime was being pushed out, the Germans, and another totalitarian occupying regime was returning and pushing, pushing the first regime out. Uh, as the Red Army and the Soviets approached what had been Poland's eastern border with the Soviet Union, the leadership of the Polish Home Army, which was the main resist underground resistance force that was both anti-Nazi, anti-communist. Um, it was actually the largest underground resistance army at that time in Europe. I believe about 400,000 people. And on top of that, you had um, the National Armed Force, you had the peasant battalion. So we're talking about half a million at least, uh, half a million strong under Polish underground resistance movement. But the Home Army was the main one, and the Home Army was the, uh, the 
armed, the armed, were the armed representatives of the Polish government, the legal Polish government in London, and fearing that the Soviets would basically repeat the scenario from 1939-1940 uh, in lands that were still inhabited by Poles, the Polish underground, the leadership of the whole army, decided to launch operation, something called Operation Tempest, which was an attempt to liberate uh, Polish lands from the Germans and to kick out the Germans and to quickly establish Polish official structures, Polish government uh, representatives in those areas before the Soviets came. Of course, this ended up being very naive because uh, it was very naive to expect that the Soviets would simply say, oh, okay, this is, there's a legal Polish government here. Okay, we're not going to take you over anymore since you already have a legal administration. Uh, in reality, the Soviets simply arrested, uh, arrested uh, representatives of the Polish legal government, the whole army rounded them up and shipped, the Siber shipped them to Siberia and prison them up, simply killed them. Um, but the Warsaw Uprising, which broke out on August 1st, 1944, and which lasted for 63 days into early October, was basically had its roots in Operation Tempest. So as the Soviets approached uh, the Polish capital and the Vistula River, the Polish underground under General Burko Marowski decided to launch an uprising to expel the Germans from the city before the Soviets entered it. And as many of you know, the, the Soviets, of course, didn't lend a hand, even though they had been encouraging an uprising because they wanted, they wanted the Poles to lead and to exhaust themselves before they came in. So, of course, later, the Soviets and the Communists ridiculed the uprising as this naive, romantic, crazy, typically Polish idea, but at the same time, they had encouraged it. So, when the uprising was actually raging in Warsaw, the Soviets simply stopped on the Vistula River and just stood by because for Stalin it was very convenient to have the Germans destroy and kill the, the home army and Polish resistance, which was also anti-Soviet. So after 63 days, you had, you had many of Poland's finest patriots perishing or getting uh, go, ending up in POW camps, which those people were actually lucky. Um, you had 200,000 Polish civilians getting massacred by the Germans in many, many, uh, many terrible ways. The Germans, including their ethnic auxiliaries from Ukraine, Russia, the Baltics, uh, etc., um, went from house to house and slaughtered the Polish civilians who were still there. Um, and Hitler who was furious ordered the Polish capital to be leveled. So that the city was destroyed, uh, much of its population had been killed, and the home army had been weakened and gutted in many ways. So, so that, is, that, is your, that is the historical context they'll be talking about. And Mr. Ibitsky here will pick up where I'm living off and he'll show you how uh, Pol the Poles, and especially Polish youth, which are very social media savvy, are using Facebook, Twitter, and all of these different social media outlets to commemorate the uprising and keep its memory going. So, without further ado, Mr. Ibitsky, please go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, some... Uh, for introduce me and some brief, historical brief. Uh, thank you, Professor Khodakiewicz, for asking for this lecture, and thank you, the Institute for uh, hosting and great uh, organization. Uh, so, uh, the first of August, the Soviet Ar Soviet army uh, was very close to uh, to the Vistula River, and as we know, the uh, Home Army started the rising. This is situation in the Central Europe on the end of July. Uh, 
In opinion of Polish uh, government, it, it was the fact that the, the Germans are retreat and uh, also will be taken by Soviets by two or three days. But it was a mistake. Uh, when the uprising started, the, the Polish soldiers uh, take control over part of the city, uh, but not all the city. And in fact, the uh, Warsaw was the big trap for Polish soldiers and for Polish civilians, especially for Polish civilians. Because in the first day of fight, uh, German soldiers didn't fight with uh, Polish Home Army soldiers, but they, they start the big uh, extermination of citizens of Warsaw. It was the big massacre of the Polish history, and in fact in the history of Europe, and maybe of the world. Uh, it is, uh, Polish uh, Home Army Special Forces, the, the best soldiers from Kadiv unit. Uh, yes, uh, the massacre began in the uh, early August. Uh, it was made by uh, these people, especially the Dirlewanger. Dirlewanger was the uh, units of killers, the units, uh, some, some kind of ancient group. Uh, they were uh, only formed to kill the civilian people in Warsaw. Uh, these are victims of the Wola massacre. Wola is the western district of uh, Warsaw. And in one day, in 5 August 1944, the German soldiers uh, killed 45,000 people from this uh, part of the city, uh, especially children and, uh, and women. Uh, in fact, the uh, whole uh, district was destroyed. The 45,000 is more than uh, instance group and uh, killed in one day in Kiev, for example. Uh, next, of course, it was not only Wola massacre, because the uh, Germans killed Polish civilians and soldiers and PO wolves uh, PO, uh, in the old uh, city. Now in Warsaw, we have a uh, lot of place of memory with the numbers of people killed. And this is numbers from, you know, from 10 to 1,000, 1,000. Especially uh, Germans killed people in hospitals. In all the town, who fell in the September 1944, uh, the Germans uh, kill, destroy all uh, Polish hospitals and kill all, all, uh, all patients, all, all, also, all, all uh, doctors and nurses. In one hospital in Duga Street, they killed 150 people. In a uh, uh, rising hospita hospital uh, in the old town, in, uh, they killed 200 people. So it was one big massacre. Uh, the bodies was uh, usually burned in big uh, pillows. So uh, the after the after the war, uh, the police find in Warsaw the 20 tons of human ashes. Uh, 20 tons. <coughs> the scientists uh, make some research and uh, they found that 20 tons of ashes is ashes uh, uh, of 55,000 people, but uh, only only in uh, in Wola district. After the after the fall, the the, the rising, the Germans burn out all, all the city and destroy. In fact, also was completely destroyed after the city, after the after the uprising. But in fact, during the battle, uh, only 25 percent of building was destroyed. But the 65 percent of building in Warsaw was destroyed uh, by Germans after the battle. And this is a view of uh, old town of Warsaw in uh, the 1946, after the after the war. The old city was comp completely destroyed. And in 2004, uh, the Warsaw authorities uh, estimate material losses uh, of uh, the city for 45 billions of dollars. So this is big losses. Is and you must know that in, in Poland, all, lo all losses of Poland 
uh, was never estimated. But this is hundreds of billions of dollars. So uh, our country now uh, still paid for war. Because we must, for example, also was rebuilt after the war. But it will be cost. Yes, the, and uh, this is one of the most famous initiatives of, in the uh, Polish, uh, Polish Museum of Warsaw Rising. This is a, a, so, uh, in, it's on the trailer in, uh, in uh, Warsaw Museum of uh, Warsaw Uprising. You can see a uh, animation uh, with the view of uh, also all also after the uh, war. This is sort of part of this animation. In fact, the wars of war was more, more destroyed than Hiroshima after the A-bomb, and uh, was more people were killed. Uh, yes, after, uh, <coughs> after the war, uh, the soldiers of home army who survived was still hunted, uh, not by Nazis, but by communists. And the lots of uh, uh, lots of these people was, was killed after the after the war in executions, and the leadership of Polish underground was uh, arrested by uh, Soviets and uh, sent to the prison in Moscow. This is a uh, Polish underground leaders leaders on Moscow during the fake trial, and uh, only two of them back uh, to the Poland. The rest uh, die in the uh, Soviet prison. One of the famous Polish soldiers murdered by the Soviets was the Witold Pilecki. Who, who, who knows Witold Pilecki? Yeah. Yeah, Witold Pilecki was the man who voluntarily go to the Auschwitz uh, to see what is going on in Auschwitz on the order of uh, Home Army headquarters and escape and make first report. The Jan Karski, who moved to America to, to move to America to meet in, uh, with Roosevelt in Washington, have information from Pilecki. After the war in 1948, uh, Pilecki was arrested by, uh, by Polish communist government and killed. And the, the body was hidden and uh, was found last year. Pilecki, of course, was a soldier of Warsaw Uprising, was one of commanders uh, on, the, on the Uprising. Next to the, uh, during Stalinist time, uh, the Warsaw Uprising was, uh, com commemoration of Warsaw Uprising was uh, completely not possible. Uh, this is, for example, the, the graves of, of the uh, Home Army soldiers in Poponski Cemetery in Warsaw. And uh, for example, if the families or, or friends wants to uh, come with some light to, to the, this grave, it's, it will be maybe not crime, but it will be big, it was big tra trouble for, for him. Because communists want to hunt people who commemorate the, the, the wars of uprising and all ho home army. So something changed uh, next to the Stalin die. And when uh, the Stalinists go, Stalinists end in Poland in 1956. <coughs> uh, of course, it was still communist, but maybe more light communist. And uh, the communi new communist, not communist government uh, uh, changed the policy, and uh, some monuments, some mo some monuments, and some. Uh, 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 commemoration uh, was uh, possible, but uh, Warsaw Uprising was was not a was a not thing uh, the thing uh, important for uh, for nation and, and for government 
because the communist government have uh, other heroes, yes? Uh, for the communist government, the heroes of the Polish uh, underground was the soldiers of uh, uh, People's Army, the organization of Polish communists, uh, a very small organization. For example, they, the People's Army joined to Warsaw Uprising, but they have only 200 soldiers. The whole number of soldiers of Warsaw Uprising was 25,000. Do you know? And, uh, but in the 1989, the communists fall in Poland. Poland was a free country, and a lot of people think that now is the time to commemorate the, uh, the Warsaw Uprising. But uh, nothing uh, like that happened. Uh, the Warsaw Uprising was still not very important historical e event for uh, Polish governments. Uh, nobody built the Museum of Rising. And for example, the, some liberal media in Poland uh, says that uh, Home Army soldiers was anti-Semitic or, or maybe fascist. Uh, for example, the, uh, in the 15th anniversary of the, uh, of the uh, Rising, the biggest Polish library newspaper, the Gazeta Wyborcza, uh, says that uh, Home Army soldiers during uh, Warsaw Uprising killing the Jews. Uh, in fact, Jews fight with Poles in the Warsaw Uprising, and the uh, uh, Polish soldiers free the Jews uh, from the uh, Gąsiówka camp. Gąsiówka camp was the part of the ghetto, after the after German destroyed the ghetto, they established a concentration camp uh, host, and Polish uh, soldiers in the 2nd of August, uh, of, of August, uh, liberated that camp. So uh, the Polish veterans, veterans of Home Army and uh, Warsaw Uprising was very, was very sad people. They live in the, with very small uh, rent, they have pensions, yes, pensions, thank you. On the, in the fact, on the, uh, on the margin? margin? On the mar so margin of society. Right, on margins of society, thank you. Uh, and this is not, very not okay, yes. Uh, and something changed when uh, the Lech Kaczynski, this man, uh, was elected for the mayor of Warsaw in 2002. Lech Kaczynski was the son of a pair of uh, Warsaw Uprisers. Uh, both uh, ma mother and father fight in Warsaw Uprising. And uh, it was the first decision was the building of the uh, Museum of Uprising. And this is the museum. The museum was built very shortly. It was opened in 2004 for the uh, 16th anniversary of Rising. And the opening of the museum was a big event. First time. It was the first big uh, commemoration of Warsaw <laughs> Uprising after 60 years. Uh, the authorities of Warsaw uh, uh, make some big celebrations. The all living uh, uprisers moved to Warsaw. Uh, the lots of uh, other monuments was, was built. And, it, and uh, lots of people in Poland, first time, maybe not heard about. Uh, Warsaw Uprising, but first time see that it was a very important thing. And that Warsaw Uprising was very brave and very uh, very important people for Polish history. Uh, and now this is the, uh, the W hour, uh, W because uh, Warsaw, the W hour was the uh, code name for the hour of, of start of uh, rising. It was 5 p.m. at August 1st, 1944. Now in Warsaw, every day in 1st of August, in the 5 p.m., the old people stopped for the few minutes.
So this is one of the movies uh, made by the uh, Museum of Warsaw Uprising. It's very popular in 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 YouTube in, in this uh, social media uh, uh, question. Like social media was very important for uh, remembering of uh, Warsaw Uprising uh, because uh, the young people have very big connection with soldiers of Warsaw Uprising because soldiers of Warsaw Uprising. Uh, uh, usually have 20, 25 years or, or less. Uh, so the legend of Warsaw Uprising is some, something uh, very interesting for young Polish people in the same, in the same age. So it's a lot of uh, uh, initiative in, in, in social media. Uh, and uh, the old things uh, for example, YouTube is uh, now one of the uh, most important uh, sites for uh, commemorating of uh, Warsaw Uprising because there are lots of movies, uh, lots of songs. This is, for example, the songs of Lao, Lao Tse. Lao Tse is quite popular for po Polish band. Uh, and uh, this is song from the uh, album Warsaw Uprising uh, from 2005. It was the first album sponsored by the Museum of the uh, Story of Warsaw Uprising. Uh, okay. uh, uh, and this was a big success. The, the, it was not only commemoration, it was uh, pop, uh, pop cultural success. Because the. Yeah, yeah pop culture. Because. Uh, the thousands of people buy this uh, album. Uh, it's, this song is uh, in, in this side. This is 204,000 viewers. But for example, th this song in all the YouTube have one million of viewers. Uh, I personally saw uh, Lao Tse two times. I was in the concerts, and the, the young people was completely crazy about songs about Warsaw Uprising. No, because this Lao Tse songs about Israel stuff, love or something, have, uh, have uh, a lot of uh, albums now and songs. But uh, during concert, all all people waiting only for for songs about Warsaw Uprising. So uh, after them, the other musicians uh, make some albums about Warsaw Uprising with help of uh, Museum of, of Uprising. <coughs> For example, this is this year new album, Placówka, Outpost. Uh, this is recorded by Vuvo. Vuvo is very old and famous Polish rock band. And the lyrics in this album based on uh, poems uh, from Warsaw Uprising. Because in the during the Warsaw Uprising, the headquarters of Home Army uh, started a competition, poet competition, and, uh, and uh, for fighting soldiers. And the uh, uh, prize was, main prize was machine gun for the, for the best poem. Second prize was the handgun, and third prize was <coughs> gra grenades. And uh, after 71 years, uh, the museum find these poems, and uh, and the musicians uh, have songs with this with these poems. And now it's, it's quite new. It's the, the first uh, uh, first concert uh, of uh, with these songs was one week ago, uh, but now it's very popular in Poland. And you must see this. It's not typical uh, mu patriotic mu music. Like, you know, in U.S. Yankee Doodle something. This is not uh, patriotic na national music. This is uh, normal rock music. But the lyrics are about war, about uh, about these young soldiers. But it's some sometimes, sometimes the lyrics are very very hard for here. This, this is not. This is, War is not very funny, but the young people, I think, knew that war is not very funny. But once commemorate the the was of uprising in that way. So, the, this is other uh, this new thinking from last year in 2004. The uh,
Zero made a documentary based on material shot by Polish operator during World War II. They have one more than one hour, hour of uh, material from fight, and this material was colorized and uh, <coughs> let's see. This is an original movie and was During making a mo uh, this movie, the, the museum start an uh, internet operation uh, to find uh, people from this movie. And they find uh, 11 or, 20 or maybe 50 people who still are alive and uh, are in this, uh, these pictures. This movie was, uh, was great. Uh, this movie was great success. Uh, was viewed by 700,000 people in Polish cinemas. And have the English version. You, you, you can buy it in the US, I think. Uh, so, also in last year, we have a first big uh, movie production about uh, Words of Uprising. Uh, it's a trailer. This is a story of one young, young uh, home army soldier uh, during uh, Wars of uh, Rising. This film was uh, made by Jan Komasa, a very young, young Polish uh, director, and uh, it's in this movie is, was directly for uh, young people, because it's very modest. Some, some, some parts of this uh, movie are like Matrix or something, it's not a typical historical movie. This uh, movie was sold by uh, one and a half million viewers in Polish cinemas. Okay, thank you. Yes, but uh, not only uh, official institutions uh, commemorate the Warsaw Uprising, this is not only movies, not only uh, not only authorities of Warsaw uh, remember uh, Warsaw Rising, for example, the soccer uh, fans. Soccer fans in Poland are very patriotic and uh, right, right winded. Uh, so, in uh, all anniversary, during all anniversary, in all stadiums, football, soccer, sorry, soccer stadiums in uh, Poland, uh, we have some uh, stadium decorations. The fans uh, make something like this, the, the, the big banners uh, about Warsaw Uprising, about soldiers, about history. This is, for example, in my hometown city of Wrocław, in Stadium of Wrocław. And we have, and for example, other decorations in, from Warsaw. I know these things, uh, uh, these things in YouTube uh, usually goes viral, so are watched by a lot of people.
can move forward. This symbol of uh, Polish underground. Uh, actually, in fact, uh, the flames on Polish stadiums are illegal, but nobody cares. You know, it, it was a big change because I know 15 years ago nobody do that in the stadiums. No, nobody stay in uh, in uh, during uh, W hour in, in Warsaw. The, the critical moment was the 2004, the, the Lech Kaczyński job and the and the starting of uh, Museum of uh, History of Warsaw of Ukraine. In that and we it was uh, 11 years ago and at the time we have a big change on Polish social. Society, especially in, in, especially young people, now are very more patriotic, more more conservative, more like minded because uh, they have new heroes. So you, for example, I have uh, the shield. Yes, it is. But it's very in Poland is very popular now. Uh, have the patriotic shields. So this, uh, oh, this is a shields with. Uh, with, with like with beige, right? and the, there are s shops with a lot of uh, shields like that. For example, in the in the <coughs> in the opening slide, there was a pair of, of young Polish uh, uh, people with with, uh, with shields like that. And uh, it's uh, now it's normal. You, you go especially do, during uh, war surprising anniversary, but uh, it's, you saw a lot of people with. with uh, for example, home army soldiers on the shield. Home army soldiers are like, uh, I don't know, Jim Morris in other countries, yes, or, or Che Guevara. Che Guevara yes, of course, we don't like Che Guevara, but he's very popular, yes, on the shields, uh, on the ties. But uh, in Poland, we have uh, our heroes on, on, on the shields, and some kind of pride, yes. Ah, this is a, a screenshot from Salon 24. Salon 24 is the one of the biggest political blogging site in Poland. And always uh, near the 1st of August, the hundreds, sometimes thousands of people uh, make posts about Warsaw Uprising. Because it's still very, of course, maybe historical discussion now is, have, maybe have no, no, no any sense, but uh, it's, this popularity in, in social media the, the, is a proof that Polish, for Polish people the, the events from 1944 are still very important. So this is one of the first interesting actions on the Twitter. It is an account uh, PW1944 and uh, between 1st of August and October 5, uh, uh, this account recurring uh, some episodes from the Warsaw Uprising, like 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 cover, yes? like like news site. So there is no this information like it's 5 p.m. 1st August we started a fighting in Warsaw. Yes, this is 2nd of August the Germans arrived or something like that. There are photos, and the, the Twitter users have news from the Warsaw Uprising. Facebook, uh, not, Facebook now is very popular in Poland, uh, especially in, in uh, for some political uh, actions. And we found on Facebook, we found hundreds of sites and profiles about Warsaw Uprising, doing by people. Not it's not a, it's a not an official pages. Also, some sometimes there are only twenty or twenty five people. Sometimes one hundred in the group and they share information about Warsaw Uprising, photos uh, and uh, informa information about some events uh, and Instagram. Instagram was not very popular uh, in Poland, now grow popularity and you find a thousand of uh, photos with these uh, tags. The most popular tag is Powstanie Warszawskie, Warsaw Uprising. Uh, if you have Instagram, 
you 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 can follow this uh, this hashtag now because now tomorrow is uh, a anniversary and it will be a lot of uh, photos from Warsaw uh, uh, with, uh, from the events of and commemorations. Uh, this is one of the a lo one of the a lot of internet projects, the Gwos Bohatera, Voice of the Hero. Uh, they have any connections with any foundation, institute or something. This is made by volunteers, by some bloggers. Uh, they make uh, photos uh, and especially they speak with old uh, Polish soldiers because uh, about about wars of uprising and uh, about uh, the war. Uh, they have uh, Instagram account but have, have a Facebook account and have uh, YouTube with lots of movies with, uh, uh, with interviews with uh, Polish soldiers. I must say that it's also a, a lot of interviews with uh, Polish soldiers in uh, YouTube of uh, Museum of Force of Uprising. Uh, sometimes with English subtitles, so you can uh, uh, watch and hear these uh, people stories. Yes. Now, every year there are new ideas. This is a completely new idea in uh, Polish social media. Uh, there are. Uh, there is an initiative, some action, uh, W hour, about W hour, because uh, these people want uh, to stop all country, not only Warsaw, in 5 p.m. of 1st of August. And now, uh, this is, now this is not only 3,000 likes, 30,000 likes, now I saw it, it is 40,000 likes. And uh, I think uh, maybe, maybe, Maybe not here, but maybe next year, uh, this initiative uh, will uh, change, change something new, in Poland, something other in Poland. Because, now, you know, of course, the commemoration in Warsaw Uprising is all, all the country, but the, the stopping by is only in Warsaw. Uh, so, thank you for your attention. This is my Twitter account. Uh, I, I, you, 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 you are tweeting on Polish, but sometimes I have something interesting, photos or, or links. Uh, so if you want to uh, know what is going on in Poland, uh, you can follow me. <laughs>